Hello guys and welcome back! There are a lot of videos on YouTube with homemade cooler boxes using Peltier modules, but most of them are fake. You think you can cool down this entire box using a Peltier module and this tiny heat sink? No, you can't. Some of these videos even have over a million views. Why do you enjoy watching them? Now, I'm not gonna debunk those videos, that's not my thing. Besides, you need a bushy unibro for that. But what I am going to do is to show you how I built a real fridge with Peltier modules and explain in great detail every step. This is a Peltier module, but you probably already know this. When you connect it to a 12 volts power supply, one side will get hot, that's the one with the big radiator, and the other side will get cold. Thermal paste should be used on both sides for a better temperature transfer. On the cold side I will stick this small radiator and measure its temperature. I've tested 4 types of Peltier modules and I think this one is the best for my mini fridge. The last two digits represent the current consumption, in this case 3 amps. This is a simple digital thermostat. I will use it to set the temperature inside the fridge. It has a start temperature on the left and the finish temperature on the right. The center display shows the temperature read by the sensor. When this temperature reaches the start value, the relay from the back switches on until the temperature reaches the finish value from the right. Then it will switch off, so the relay will work to keep the temperature between the two set values. I've posted a short video on my Patreon page where I show you how I've tested the Peltier module and thermostat. The thermostat goes down to only minus 9 degrees Celsius, but without the thermostat, the coldest temperature I've got from this Peltier module with the small radiator was minus 12 degrees Celsius. I will make the box for my mini fridge from this 6mm MDF sheet. Very important when cutting MDF, use a dust mask and preferably go outside to cut it, or in a very well ventilated room. I will use an electric jigsaw to cut all the pieces. All the parts for this project need to be measured and cut very precisely, a mistake bigger than 1mm and the parts won't fit together. After I drill all the holes for the screws, I will chamfer them with a bigger drill bit. I need to make a control panel for the digital thermostat, so I'll mark and cut this MDF piece. The buttons stick out very nice. These LED displays are not very visible in daylight, as you can see here, so I will cut a piece from this semi-transparent plastic folder to cover them. The displays are much more visible with this plastic cover. I will use two parts adhesive for this job, which is transparent enough. The fridge will have an upper lid, not a side door. I need something to keep the lid closed. On the upper edge of the front panel I will insert three screws. And these three neodymium magnets will be mounted on the lid edge. I will fix them in position with super glue. They appear strong enough to keep the lid closed. I will cover my mini fridge with this white and grey vinyl sheet, but I prefer to wrap each panel individually. It will take longer this way, instead of covering the entire fridge with one piece, but I think it will look much better in the end, and all the MDF panels will be properly covered. To cover the edges of every hole in the MDF panel, I will cut the vinyl with a cutter and bend it inside. The thermostat panel also has two big holes for ventilation, because this is very important as I will explain in my next video. All the panels are nicely wrapped now, like presents. It's easy to finish the box now, I just need to tighten the screws in the already made holes. This is my first project with Peltier modules, so if I've made any mistakes, you're free to correct me in the comments section. 
This is the base panel. It's very satisfying for your eyes when everything fits together nicely, isn't it? I need to position the thermostat sensor inside the fridge, but I don't want it to touch the cold radiator because it will alter the measurements. I will use a few drops of super glue to hold it in position. It's time to insulate the interior of my mini fridge. I will use this extruded polystyrene foam sheet with a thickness of 6 mm. This is actually a leftover insulation piece from when I've installed my laminated wood floor. It's placed under the laminated boards, so it has very good thermal insulation properties. Much better than expanded polystyrene foam. I'll measure all the needed pieces and cut them. I will use silicone adhesive to fix the insulation in position. The silicone adhesive will be evenly spread with a small plastic pallet. The bottom insulation foam will have a groove for the sensor wires. For a better thermal insulation, I will double the polystyrene thickness. I will glue the polystyrene sheets together with a very thin layer of silicone adhesive. So, in the end, my mini fridge will have 12 mm of extruded polystyrene insulation. This material is also stronger than expanded polystyrene foam that everybody is familiar with. The bottom panel is exposed to everything I put inside the fridge, so I will cover it with a vinyl sheet for protection. I'll continue to insulate each side with two pieces of polystyrene foam, except the back panel, this will have only 6 mm of insulation. The temperature sensor will go through the insulation and will be mounted inside the fridge. This thin aluminum piece will be mounted on the tip of the temperature sensor using thermal glue. I'm hoping this bigger surface will provide a better temperature reading for the sensor. But actually I was wrong, as I will explain in the part 2 video. The enclosure is almost finished. It needs a cold radiator now, which will be made from this aluminum plate. I'll cut a piece from it with the exact dimensions. It has a thickness of 3 mm, I think that's good enough. It will be fixed on the interior of the back panel with 5 screws. So earlier, before I've made the MDF box, I've marked and drilled the holes for all the screws. I also made 2 square holes for the Peltier modules. But one aluminum plate is not enough to cool down the interior of my fridge. And because this is not a fake video, like many others, I need 2 more aluminum plates for the side walls. I'll make them from this 1.5mm thick aluminum plate. The temperature transfer needs to be very good between the three aluminum plates, so I will fix them together with two L-shaped aluminum rods. Each side will be tightened with three screws and I will also use thermal paste. Because the back aluminum plate is thicker, I was able to make the holes with screw threads. It's easier to tighten them now, just use a screwdriver. I will show you how I've made the threaded holes in the part 2 video. And this is the final cold radiator. If you're wondering why I've chosen this shape and size, it's because it can easily take a six pack of beer. Juice! Ah, damn it. My internal radiator has a cooling surface of 936 square centimeters and it creates an internal volume of almost 6 liters. Do you know why other YouTubers use a small heatsink? because their device is not good enough to cool down a big radiator. So they show you a frozen tiny heatsink, hoping that you'll say, hey, that's good enough to cool down an entire box. No, it isn't. Before I mount the radiator, I need to cut two square holes in the insulation for the Peltier modules. And now let's mount the radiator inside the fridge. But something's wrong, it doesn't fit. I don't think there is a problem with my calculations because I double check and triple check them. So what's the problem, why doesn't it fit? The extruded polystyrene insulation should be 6 mm thick, that's the number I've used in my calculations. But its real thickness is 6.5 mm. So the space for the radiator is actually smaller with 1 mm on every side. But I will just use the force and push it in position. Now I just tighten the 5 screws in the already made holes. 
both cold and hot radiators need to be fixed to the MDF panel because they will push on both sides of the Peltier modules. This project is getting too long, so this will be the end of part 1. There is still a lot of work ahead. In part 2 I will create a big radiator for the hot side, install a lid and all the electronics and finally test the fridge thoroughly. If you don't want to miss it, click the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and share it. I'll see you soon.